Welcome to the Folktale Project, this is Dan Shawls. Today we have part two of the Master Maid, and so far we've seen, well, the prince, the young prince, has left his father's home, hired himself off to be the servant to a giant, and fallen in love with the Master Maid, who has helped him out of quite a pickle in his first day on the job. And now, we're come to day two, in the Master Maid. On the second morning, the giant had again to go out with his goats, so he told the prince that on that day he was to fetch home his horse, which was out on the mountainside, and when he had done that, he might rest himself for the remainder of the day. For well, you have come to a kind master, and that you shall find, said the giant once more. But do not go into any of the rooms that I spoke of yesterday, or I will wring your head off, said he. And then he went away with his flock of goats. Yes, indeed, you are a kind master, said the prince. But I will go in and talk to the master maid again. Perhaps before long she may like better to be mine than yours. So he went to her. Then she asked him what he had to do that day. Oh, not very dangerous work, I fancy said the king's son. I have only to go up the mountainside after his horse. Well, how do you mean to set about it? asked the master maid. Oh, there is no great art in riding a horse home, said the king's son. I think I must have ridden friskier horses before now. Yes, but it is not so easy a thing as you think to ride the horse home, said the master maid. But I will teach you what to do. When you go near it, fire will burst out of its nostrils like flames from a pine torch. But be very careful. Take the bridle which is hanging by the door there, and fling the bit straight into its jaws. And then it will become so tame that you will be able to do what you like with it. He said he would bear this in mind. And then he sat again there the whole day by the master maid, and they chatted and talked of one thing and another. But the first thing was the last now and how happy and delightful it would be if they could marry each other, and get away safely from the giant. And the prince would have forgotten both the mountainside and the horse if the master maid had not reminded him of them as evening drew near, and said that now it would be better if he went to fetch the horse before the giant came. So he did this, and took the bridle which was hanging on a crook and strode up the mountainside, and it was not long before he met with the horse, and fire and red flames streamed out of both its nostrils. But the youth carefully watched his opportunity, and just as it was rushing at him with open jaws, he threw the bit straight into its mouth, and the horse stood as quiet as a young lamb, and there was no difficulty at all in getting it home to the stable. Then the prince went back to his room again and began to hum and to sing. Towards evening, the giant came home. Have you fetched the horse back from the mountainside? he asked. That I have, master. It was an amusing horse to ride, but I rode him straight home and put him in the stable too, said the prince. I will see about that, said the giant, and went out to the stable. But the horse was standing there just as the prince had said. You have certainly been talking with my master maid, for you never got that out of your own head said the giant again. Yesterday, master, you talked about this master maid, and today you are talking about her. Ah, heaven bless you, master. Why will you not show me the thing? For it will be a real pleasure for me to see it, said the prince, who again pretended to be silly and stupid. Oh, you will see her quite soon enough, said the giant. On the morning of the third day, the giant again had to go into the wood with the goats. Today you must go underground and fetch my taxes, he said to the prince. When you have done this, you may rest for the remainder of the day, for you shall see what an easy master you have come to. And then he went away. Well, however easy a master you may be, you set me very hard work to do, thought the prince. But I will see if I cannot find your master maid. You say she is yours, but for all that she may be able to tell me what's to do now. And he went to her. So... When the master maid asked him what the giant had set him to do that day, he told her that he was to go underground and get the taxes. And how will you set about that? said the master maid. Oh, you must tell me how to do it, said the prince. 
for I have never yet been underground, and even if I knew the way, I do not know how much I am to demand. Oh, yes, I will soon tell you that. You must go to that rock there under the mountain ridge and take that club that is there and knock on the rocky wall, said the master maid. Then someone will come out to you who will sparkle with fire. You shall tell him your errand, and when he asks you how much you want to have, you are to say, as much as I can carry. Yes, I will keep that in mind, said he. And then he sat there with the master maid the whole day until night drew near, and he would gladly have stayed there till now if the master maid had not reminded him that it was time to be off to fetch the taxes before the giant came. So he set out on his way and did exactly what the master maid had told him. He went to the rocky wall and took the club and knocked on it. Then came one so full of sparks that they flew both at his eyes and his nose. What do you want? said he. I was to come here for the giant and demand the tax for him, said the king's son. How much are you to have then? said the other. I ask for no more than I am able to carry with me, said the prince. It is well for you that you have not asked for a horse load, said he who had come out of the rock. But now come in with me. This the prince did, and what a quantity of gold and silver he saw. It was lying inside the mountain like heaps of stone in a waste place, and he got a load that was as large as he was able to carry, and with that he went his way. So in the evening, when the giant came home with the goats, the prince went into the chamber and hummed and sang as he had done on the other two evenings. "'Have you been for the tax?' said the giant. "'Yes, that I have, master,' said the prince. "'Where have you put it, then?' said the giant again. "'The bag of gold is standing there on the bench,' said the prince. "'I will see about that,' said the giant, and went away to the bench. But the bag was standing there, and it was so full that gold and silver dropped out when the giant untied the string.' You have certainly been talking with my master maid, said the giant, and if you have, I will wring your neck. Master maid, said the prince, yesterday my master talked about this master maid, and today he is talking about her again, and the first day of all it was talk of the same kind. I do wish I could see the thing myself. Yes, yes, wait till tomorrow, said the giant, and then I myself will take you to her. Ha! Master, thank you, but you are only mocking me, said the king's son. And that is the second and third day in the story of The Master Maid. I do hope you're enjoying this tale because it is about to take off in a very, very excitable way. This is Dan Scholes for The Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, Audible, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com. We'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>